Howdy everyone, Sarah here. I'm Andrew. This is Real Estate and Coffee. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the front page article of Consumer Reports. It is Home Safe Home. I think it's kind of an alarmist article, but it made the front page and it's several pages long. And so we're going to hit some notes that we thought were actually interesting. Yeah, because I think it's a great topic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for home inspectors, real estate agents, people looking to buy a house. Safety is important. Especially with a, like a market where there's, you know, older houses are in vogue. Yeah, so. mid-century modern. We live in a mid-century home that was flipped. Mm -hmm. And still a lot of updates need to be done and a lot of maintenance. A lot of maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, since we're on video and this is real estate and coffee, we're drinking our bulletproof coffee from our one community real estate mugs. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie Holt and Lee Brown and... Vito and all the gang. All right, cheers. All right. Okay, so checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. Um, okay, Andrew has highlighted here that I'm going to read from the article. Thirty-five percent of single-family homeowners say they've done in their current home, according to the Consumer Report 21 survey, is that um, they do a periodic periodic self check. One sign of trouble: a plug won't stay in. Mm -hmm. Why do you have that highlighted? Well, I, I, I highlighted that because in the article they're saying it's a good idea to have your electricity inspected to mm -hmm. make sure that it's up to par. And Yeah, that's very uncommon with a lot of older homes. Yeah, they recommend hiring an electrician uh, to do it. Most in, most home inspectors can um, do a, um, a good enough inspection to be able to tell you what next steps you need to take. The electrician... Um, can come in and do the same type of inspection, but then give you numbers and methods and things like that. So um, in this case, in the article, it says only 35% of homeowners have actually had such an inspection done. And that's scary low. So, Very low. And that's only of the consumer report people. Yeah. So imagine what that's like if you were to do a larger scale poll. So <laughs> Because I think this is aimed at older people because they also say for safety if you're a little unsteady footed in your tub maybe have a seat with rubber bottoms and yeah. i'm like maybe and try installing grab bars <laughs> yeah maybe this is um not catered to our millennial demographic but maybe the boomers maybe perhaps a little hint but definitely anyway. not gen z no gen z. no but this is important to us too the ones of us who can stand up straight without wobbling over in the top. <laughs> I don't know. I have my own difficulties. <laughs> um, um, I want to stay on the kitchen for a minute yeah. um, uh, if, if we can before we go to, to other things. Because, you know, the kitchen is where you, you're spending a lot of time. And so it definitely is important that your electricity in the kitchen is good. Um, even if it's a newer house, electricity needs to be checked. Because I still have that video. It's on a report that I took a video of a, a GFCI receptacle that I was testing. You know, it's got the little reset button. And I was testing it with a, uh, a tester where I push the button and it trips it. And it just popped. Uh, there was a flash. Sparks. <laughs> yeah. It's um, on video. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that was a great video catch. I should share that on Instagram so everybody can see. I'm going to put that video in this video. Yeah, that, that was in uh, October. October of 2020. So I think it's been long enough that we can share we it. Can share that. GFCI receptacle in kitchen trips at the reset and that just popped. Yeah. <laughs> we like to have a buffer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so like even newer houses, like just making sure that, um, you know, you have inspections done, even if you've bought it sight unseen and without the inspection, and everything, um, even after you've moved in and there's nobody to negotiate with anymore, still have the inspection done because you got to live in it and the, yeah. saf the safety thing's important. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, it is not just a negotiation tool to right. try to get the person to do things before they move or to give you a credit for you to get it done. A home isn't ongoing investment it's a huge investment to make you money over time you also have to pour into money like so one of the things i see all the time with some agents rent has skyrocketed in the last two years like skyrocketed yeah. significantly increased and a lot of people are saying you know it could be about the same as your current rent to buy a house your mortgage right mm -hmm. yes that's true except that when you rent 
if something goes wrong, you call the Supra or the landlord and they cover the repairs or the whatever. Yeah. When you own a home, you not only have your mortgage that is equal to your current rent, you have homeowner's insurance, electrical, all that stuff. Homeowner's insurance tends to be a little more expensive than renter's insurance. Oh, 100%. So. <laughs> if anything goes askew, you have to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Maintenance is all you. So owning a yeah. home is not the same as renting. No, it, no. it's not. It, it's a, it, it's an unfortunate. It's just a sales pitch. Um, um, yeah, misconception, I think. Yeah. Unless you don't want to <clears> take care <throat> of your home. Oh, <laughs> my Lord. Andrew just had an inspection the other day. Ooh, sidetrack. A very sidetrack. A very nice area yeah. uptown in Charlotte very desirable location but this particular unit was not cared for yeah i mean it was 16 17 years old but you know very very nice area and we've inspected other units in the same building and yeah i've inspected much worse but i think i think i've never been more shocked at the condition of such a nice place um, but it wasn't maintained and just because yeah so that significantly <clears throat> dropped its value yeah, um, and you can you can tell that by the price tag. And, yes, um, but yeah. So go, take care of it. Yeah. Take care of the home you have. It's an investment, and if this person had taken care, they. I mean, it's. I mean, it was a significant price reduction compared to other units in the same building. So, and it, it made sense when we inspected it. Why? Mm -hmm. And it was because this person didn't. I mean, it lost thousands upon thousands of dollars because they didn't invest hundreds. Yeah. Because they didn't fix the refrigerator. Small when things they could have just taken care of, and they didn't do that. So they're paying for it now. But yeah, yeah, it costs them. But anyway, so yeah, you that's <clears throat> let us learn from their errors. All right, so back to safety things. <laughs> Electrical safety is also important in the bathroom because it's a place with water. So water and electricity, everybody knows, doesn't mix. So making sure that you're protected. So GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter. Some people just say GFI, you know, whatever. It's the same thing. And having that protection. So if there is a, um, if, if there's something wrong uh, with electricity, if water gets splashed in and there's this surge of electricity, there's a little switch in there that cuts off the power. And, to, uh, and the hope is that it will protect you from electrocution. You're still, hope. <laughs> you're still going to get a Best shock. case scenario, you'll start hearing women's thoughts. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> and so older houses aren't going to have this. Yeah, GF, uh, GFCI was invented in like the mid to late 60s. It wasn't put in place in the code until the early 70s. And it, it you know, it started outside and then they added um, bathroom, then they added kitchen, then they added, you know, it, it, it just changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And even in the latest code, uh, 2020, they still added more things. Um, so the more, you know, time yeah. goes on, <clears throat> gotta make changes. You just drank my coffee. Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> just making sure we're clear. <laughs> Finished my matcha. So uh, in, anyway, all that to say, um, we, we get caught up. Uh, and when I say we, I mean like home buyers, we get caught up, you know, things up to code and well, this house was built in the fifties. So code didn't require it then. <laughs> and no, uh, yeah. So uh, does that mean that, you know, it's required? No, it's grandfathered, but we know now what's safe and what's not safe. Yeah. So while it's grandfathered, it doesn't make it safe. Right. It just means you legally don't have to change it. Yeah. And, and it doesn't, it's mean not, it, a, it's yeah. not a code violation. Um, which is not something we as home inspectors get into. That's yeah. not our thing. That's, you know, that's not our side of the street. Yeah. And if there's anything um, questionable, we'll refer you an electrician out there to get in the nitty gritty of all the details. Mm -hmm. Well, regardless of what the code was when the time uh, when the house was built, it's still very much in your best interest to bring it up to current standards. If you do like remodel jobs or like a big service upgrade with your electrical then it is going to be required to bring up to current code um, because whenever you have to pull permits and stuff, then you got to get those code inspections. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're doing like a, a kitchen remodel and you're just redoing the whole kitchen and electrical and everything, uh, well, then at that point, that grandfather clause doesn't exist. Now you're going to be held to the standards of the day. So if you're going to be doing a kitchen remodel in your older house or a bathroom remodel and you're doing it yourself, 
pull the permits. Mm. Don't don't ever skip the permits. Don't and, and you know what's so annoying about this is that they don't make it easy to pull the permits. Like there's just so much unnecessary red tape that even for I was talking to uh, one of our fellow tradesmen about this, and she was saying because she pulls all the permits for the company how there is just takes forever for Mecklenburg County is like particularly the worst. Mecklenburg County is awful. The worst and it's the like DMV. Yeah, Mecklenburg, Jeez. pull it together. You're a huge county, tons of taxes coming in. Just get organized because the right thing to do is to pull permits. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't do it because it's so unnecessarily tedious. The problem is when it comes time to sell your house, I was just talking to a realtor about this the other day. We were reminiscing about days when she just started and um, did all of these renovations to a home, tried to sell it, and then almost wasn't able to sell it because they had not pulled any permits. Mm. And... Um, it, it all got taken care of. They pulled the permits after the fact for the sale. And when you redo your kitchen or bathroom, huge renovations that escalate the price of your home. But you have to prove that. You prove how you did that by showing the permits and who did the work. It has to be legitimate. So please, Mecklenburg County, get your act together. Yeah. Here's, here's the problem with the delays because when it, it takes so long and in a market like this where materials are in short supply and prices are ridiculous. What's happening is the price of materials is changing so quickly that by the time you end up getting permits, prices have changed yeah. and you have to get a whole new quote yeah. or um, it, it ends up, you just run into all sorts of problems. Well, hopefully the person who ran the quote didn't increase because that's been so common for so long now that people are just adding like 12% to the price because they know it's gonna take a while by that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the builders got to get stuff from their suppliers right. and, um, you, you know, so anyway, yeah. um, pull the permits. Pull uh, the permits. Even even if it's a pain, pull the permits. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to have to do it eventually anyway if you want to show the increase in value. And you certainly don't want to face the fines no. um, if, if, you're, if they decide to enforce that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, we talked about um, kitchen and bathroom. Electrical is the biggest thing. Clean your vents. Um, Clean your vents. I do this because my father <laughs> always told me to do this after every load. Just clean the vent. Um, just to be clear, we're moving on to laundry room now. So yeah, when you when we were on bathroom and then you said whenever you do a load, that can well you already did um, that segue. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah vents. But, so <laughs> sorry. My mind goes to potty humor. Um, laundry room. Clean the vents. I'll explain. Later. <laughs> I'm so confused. <clears throat> okay. Um. The NFPA estimates, I'm reading for the article here, that about a third of dryer fires are caused by vents clogged with fibers that ignite when the dryer is running. What? Yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was just a cleanliness thing so there's less lint and it doesn't take as long nope. for your stuff to dry, which is true. Mm -hmm. You clean it, keep it clean. But yeah. But yeah, that stuff, you know, dryer lint, that's got a really low ignition temperature. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, a third of dryer fires because of a clogged vent. So Clean out your <laughs> vent. It's not hard. If you happen to have a setup that you have like a really long dryer vent, then they do have services out there, appliance repair folks that can come out or HVAC technicians that can come out and, and clean it out uh, for you because those can be kind of tough to clean out. I'll use an example of a recent inspection that was a remodel. And I went and inspected the laundry area and there was no dryer vent, none, not even a hole in the floor or the wall. So that was a problem. So I went out to do a reinspect after they installed the dryer vent. And unfortunately I said, nope, they got to come back and do it again because they used a flex duct going from the floor to the outside. You can use a, f a flexible material, just not plastic. Um, you can use um, like aluminum flexible. Why not plastic? It, because it'll melt. It's too hot. Mm. Uh, with um, so you want to, you can use flexible uh, aluminum mm -hmm. uh, metal dryer duct material from the dryer to where it, to the outlet. Right. But you can't use it going from there to the outside of the house. So if you're having to run the dryer line under the house, that needs to be rigid. Um, mm. It needs to be a, a rigid, a smooth metal walled pipe. If you have a long run of the flex material, then it's going to capture lint and lint's going to get clogged inside there. In a smooth wall pipe, that's really not going to happen. That is a code 
requirement. Well, now we understand why, because so, it causes fires. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Mm. Now, yeah, keep in mind that the people who write code is basically insurance uh, companies. That's who's responsible for building codes. All Be- worst case scenario people. Yeah, yeah, because they're the ones that pay for when things go wrong. Right. Uh, so the next part, like bedroom. So mm. uh, I will add something to this. Here's another electrical thing. AFCI. We talked about GFCI. AFCI is the arc fault circuit interrupter. This is something that was put in place in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, because there were house fires starting, uh, have you ever plugged in uh, like an iron and then you unplug it and you see like a flash? No. Um, Well, that's an arc. (laughs) (laughs) And what, um, and those are responsible for fires. Um, and so the AFCI, where GFCI is to protect from... <laughs> Who are you looking at? <laughs> I'm just looking around. Everywhere. <laughs> I look around when I think and talk. <laughs> A- <laughs> I'm not the only one that does that. No. Come on. <laughs> so GFCI prevents, uh, protects from electric shock. AFCI protects from electrical fires. And so when there's an arc, then uh, it'll, it'll trip and then you won't have power anymore. And so if your house does not have AFCI uh, protection in bedrooms, the recommendation is that you install AFCI protection. That's as simple as, um, that's a breaker that you put in your panel. Um, And they have combination AFCI, GFCI breakers. Um, But nowadays the requirement is to pretty much have AFCI everywhere. So you got GFCI in the wet areas, AFCI pretty much everywhere else, Um, like very uh, limited exceptions to that, like closets, uh, but pretty much everywhere else has to have uh, every habitable space. I think it is so, like hallways and closets, you don't need it. But um, so that's important for uh, for bedrooms is the AFCI. Um, another thing, sorry, you, you have a thought. I, don't I have so many going. thoughts. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm going to show the people watching this. Like, look at okay. the picture. You notice the it's mounted to the wall. So they're talking about mounting furniture. Little segue. It's just funny because like I've seen I'm looking at this picture and these are all the things like people like you should have that arch or you should do that. Aren't you afraid your cat's gonna die because they're gonna like they're just like freaked out because they read things like this and like stew over it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sorry, but in movies like nothing's mounted. So if they're like trying to get the intruder like keep them out, they like put the furniture in front of the door. Like you know what I mean? (laughs) But you can't do that here. Because it's mounted. Okay, I just want to point something out, though, because um, I see what you're talking about. People are you know, making a big deal and freaking out because you know, your furniture is not mounted. But you're overly concerned, possibly, that the house is going to be ra- I'm not ra- ra- raided by marauders. Like, <laughs> and I, we're going to have to I'm blockade not, all I'm the not, doors. Okay, okay. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think it needs to be mounted. Like, I have not a piece of furniture mounted to anything. Like, it's just not mounted. We almost mounted our crib to the wall because we thought our toddler might crawl into the crib to be with his brother, but he never did that. So, it's just nuts. (laughs) It's like, my kids climb the furniture all the time. It has never once tipped over and fell. It's too wide. Now, if you live in a seismic uh, area, you know, with earthquakes and stuff, I could see the sure. Of that. Yeah, things will fall over, but yeah. we don't. Yeah, no, we we didn't. And growing up, nothing was mounted, and I climbed. Nothing fell on me. I know that happens, and people get crushed, but mm-hmm. I don't see it happening all the time. Yeah, I think so we, much so that we have to like mount all our things, and then what happens if somebody comes into our home? Yeah, th- yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, uh, you know, there is the anti-tip. Uh, bracket for like the, the uh, your stove oven. And oven, you know, because both of our kids have climbed. Yeah, but the 100%. door stops them. The door so it falls open and they yeah. fall back. That's, and they're that's like, ah! the safety. That's the safety feature <laughs> yeah. right there. Yeah, because then it doesn't have a chance yet to tip over. They learned how to <laughs> lock it, the oven. They did learn, how and to then they would try oven. to climb it. And I was like, "Do you want to get burned?" No. So I told them that the oven tops are always hot. Not just when it's in use and they stop climbing. Yeah, it's always hot. It's always hot. Well. (laughs) So yes, I lied to our child. (laughs) Smoke and carbon monoxide detectors is another thing that comes up Mm. in this. It uh, carbon monoxide detectors are uh, if you get the combo smoke and carbon monoxide, then that's great. They're not that much more money. Just get them. If you don't have a fireplace or 
a gas furnace or with any gas appliances and you don't have an attached garage, those are the times uh, if you've got like all of those boxes checked, then you don't really need carbon monoxide detectors. But attached garage, gas fired appliances, um, fireplace, get a smoke detector or a uh, carbon monoxide detector. Yep. <laughs> Safe and cozy nursery is the next section. Ooh. All common things like sleep sacks, mobiles, bed sharing. Go instead with the room sharing. Mm. Yeah. And then like the whole inclined sleeper bouncy seat thing. Because, you know, inclined sleepers cause SIDS. Basically, the child will die. Mm -hmm. Next page. Because everybody knows that. All new parents read into that. We're not going to stress it. <laughs> yeah. Especially sleep slacks. Why are we so in, like insistent upon like bundling the kids up so they could sweat it out for bed? Like we need to like breathe. Our kids just slept in their diaper mm. and nothing else. Or sometimes nothing at all. Nothing at all. Because dang. I took the diaper off. Yes. <laughs> Threw it across <laughs> the room. <clears throat> uh, let's see. The next thing. Living areas and stairs. Ooh, I got a good one. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's so worrisome. Something that I come across, um, which I actually came across this the other day, uh, and I, I see this a lot, is the guardrails that have the horizontal balusters instead of the vertical balusters. With the horizontal ones, it creates a ladder effect. Kids can climb that. And so that's a child safety hazard. It might look cool. That's yeah. great. But if you have small children, uh, just keep that in mind. Yeah, it's a ladder. Yeah. Very tempting to climb so they can see over. Because their perspective is so low. You have to, like... You see all this amazing stuff from your tall perspective, but like if you go down, they want to see it too, so they're going to climb it. Yeah, because they don't have that viewpoint, and they don't have as much fear as we they adults. They don't understand do. gravity. Yeah, and, and falling and from high places, they don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was like on the third floor of a four-story uh, townhouse, and yeah, they had the balcony it dropped. And, yeah, and it, it was it was you know climbable guardrail. So yeah, it's like if you got kids. I'm just saying, don't let them play out on the balcony. It looks almost <laughs> exactly like modern day playgrounds. Yeah. Honestly, like it, it looks I the same. I want to climb it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a 37 year old kid. Oh man. <laughs> this person who wrote this article is like shameless. It's crazy. <laughs> what do you got? It's just, I'm not reading this because it's just like, she's an alarmist. 50. Get good lighting. Stay stable. Again, with the stability. <laughs> And use fire screens. You know what I think I'm is just jumping around on here. You know what I think is more of a safety hazard than a lack of lighting. It's too much lighting. I th I, I Sensory think, overload. Yeah, it hurts me. Mental health. Like yeah, the the fluorescent lights. <sighs> so like what are your takeaways? My takeaway from this article is this person is an alarmist, and it didn't need to be a four page spread and a cover story. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think there were some things missing. Yeah. Um, that they could have used instead of some of the stuff. Um, it's, just, it's just alarmist type um, stuff. I didn't see anything in there about using um, using extension cords for permanent electrical. For example, your garage door, mm. garage door opener, and the plug doesn't reach. So you use an orange cord to stretch it over. Don't nope, do that. That's a no-no. Don't do that. Why? The, the orange cords in particular, they are notorious for overheating. They're not meant to be plugged in and stay plugged in for a long time. So they will overheat. They're for like your phone. If you have <laughs> too many phones and you want to get those like updated like outlets, you just get one of those and plug your phone in and. Well, it's like, like for your, like these orange minutes. cords, like these are, these are for like a brief use. Like exactly. The, I just explained that. Yeah. You were talking about your phone. Yeah. I, brief I use. It's like 20 minutes to charge up. Unplug it. Okay. You because why I use that as an example, you're wondering, sir, because you had an orange plug on our counter. I thought it would be helpful. No, that for... that that was that wasn't it was orange. No, that wasn't an orange extension cord. That that was a multi tap with USB. It, it was the color orange. <laughs> it wasn't an orange extension cord. I thought it was an orange extension cord baby no. version because it extended. It was long. No. I thought it was a baby orange extension cord. No. Because it had three units and it was about the arm's length cord. No. Aw, <laughs> joke's on me. Um, you know, like the long one that I have yeah, down the basement. in the basement? Yeah, like like that. You know, he plugs your, in all his equipment. For your leaf blower. 
yeah, yeah. Leaf blower. well i've learned that i can't i can't really play my guitar down in the basement because our basement the electricity is not grounded and i have a um, Ooh. yeah and my amp is what is it it's a, a 120 watts um so when i plug in i get shocked by my guitar. <laughs> It's it's great. Does it feel nice? No, 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 it doesn't. But it, you know, it's worth it because <laughs> if I just need to get it out, you know, I I plug it in, I turn it up to eleven, and yeah, it's way too much electricity. It, it's um uh, just a, a teensy bit da dangerous, but that's what makes me feel alive. Okay, on that note, have a great week, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>